Hi, this is John Galloway with Microsoft. We're continuing our look at ASP.NET Web API with a more advanced scenario, custom validation. And we're going to be hooking this up using an action filter. So we're going to go into our model class and we're going to require text, author, and email. And we're doing this using a required attribute. This is a standard data annotation attribute. Then we're also going to require that the author is 10 characters or less. And with all of these, we want this to be set up so that this validation is happening on the server. So the way we'll enforce this is using a custom action filter attribute. So you'll see we've created an action filter and we start with validating the model state. So we take in that context as a parameter and validate it. If it fails, we want to build up information about what went wrong. So we're building up our collection of errors and we're doing this using the JSON object, which makes it very handy to build up dynamic information as a JSON object. Now it's great that we're packaging up all this error information, but the most important part is we need to return the right status code. So here you'll see we're setting the context response to include the right status code. We've got HTTP 400 bad requests being sent back. So that allows anyone to call into our service and immediately check that status code and find out whether or not their request succeeded. We've decided to register this globally. So we're going into our global ASAX to our configure method and we're calling config.filters.add. And then we're registering this validation filter and that's going to apply to any ASP.NET Web API service request. So now anyone calling into our services, they're going to get model validation and they're going to get back both the correct status code, they'll get that 400 status code, and they will also get back the JSON data they'll need to display it. So let's take a look at how this is being handled on the client. You'll see now we've got two status codes to check. 201 for created. If the request fails, we'll get a 400 bad request and we can then go in and dig into the JSON data that's returned to us and display it. You'll see in this case, we're just using jQuery unobtrusive validation to show the validation failures. So now let's take a look at this in action. We're running the application. I'm going to try and submit a comment and now my name is too long. It's greater than 10 characters. So you'll see when I post this back, I'm going to get a bad request response. So that is an HTTP 400 bad request. And my service response also includes the right validation information in the JSON data. So when I look at my response body, I've got everything I need to display the correct validation errors. When I shorten the name so that it passes validation, now you'll see I get that HTTP 201, which is created. And the response message now includes the, the comment information about the comment I just created. That concludes our look at validation in ASP.NET Web API. In the next screencast, we'll take a look at authorization and authentication in ASP.NET Web API.